Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Quantum Leap's uh, morning homework session for Friday, January 24th, 2014. If you're new uh, visiting us from Twitter or you're watching on YouTube, uh, Quantum Leap is a self-organized learning environment. Uh, we've been in, uh, in around for about uh, a little over four years. We run a private Skype room. Uh, it's not a convert commercial venture. It's a private room of uh, like-minded traders that uh, come together and chat about the market inside of our uh, Skype room. And then each morning we uh, come in here and do our live homework session. My name is Doug McKay. Whoops. Uh, my name is Doug Mc Oh going to be that one of those mornings. My name is Doug McKay, <laughs> and if you want to send me a, con a contact request through Skype and come in and check out our room, uh, I'm Doug underscore McKay. I'll be the one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. So each morning we start out with a uh, macro to micro, uh, take a look at where we are within the key numbers, anything that's significant, uh, and then take a look at the uh, uh, different time frames, the macro to micro trend. But before we get started, I've got to get legals out of the way. This information is for the purpose of educating members who want to expand the knowledge of the business or trading. It is not for trading or investment advice. You and only you are responsible for the trades or investment decisions you make. Trading features or any instrument involves the risk loss. Please consider carefully whether futures or options are appropriate to financial situation. Only risk capital should be used when trading features or options. Investors could lose more than initial investment. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results and uh, any trades that you do see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence and your own trade plan. Sorry about that, I just can't seem to talk today. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the numbers, uh, see what uh, comes and pops out at us. So again, you know, I think uh, key is the fact that we're still below this 1837.75, the year open, uh, now trading down in around uh, 1815. So our, you know, the bears and the bulls have been fighting in that uh, upper area around that 3732 uh, area. Uh, to see if we're, you know, we're going to have a down year or a up year. Is my re is my video uh, audio still good, Howard? I'm getting a notice that my connection was lost. Can you hear me now? Testing. Yeah, I hear you now. You did cut out for a bit. Okay, I apologize. We are having extremely frigid weather, and uh, for some reason, my uh, internet uh, keeps you know going up and down. It's uh, minus thirty-two here, wind chill factor Celsius. All right, so I don't know how much you heard of that, but we are you know below the open of the year. Uh, our year high is still forty-five seventy-five. Of course, the all-time high and last month high is forty-six fifty. Nothing really in the macro numbers. I mean, we've got a new week low uh, that we put in uh, yesterday, but we now have a new week low at 18.08 in terms of the Globex. Yesterday in the uh, Globex leading into the RTH session, we opened at 39, had a high of 44 and a low of 26.50. We opened at uh, 29.75. We did have a open drive. It was a weak open drive. Uh, they came down into that uh, you know 18 level and uh, found a little bit of support first and uh, get a bit, a bit of a retrace. But it was a big enough open drive to you know show that there was weakness coming into the marketplace and. Uh, eventually we did rotate and uh, go down and test that uh, near that 13 level which was that uh, naked VPOC we were looking at yesterday morning. Uh, initial balance high and lows were, uh, were lower. We had the high at uh, 1830, low at 1820.75. It's initial balance is your first hour uh, high and low. Uh, all the other intraday numbers uh, were negative. We uh, had a lower VPOC at uh, 1822.25. Uh, so we are seeing some weakness coming in, and of course, you know, the key for me is that we're currently trading below that 18. Uh, value area was uh, was lower as well, with a uh, value area high at 24 and a quarter, value area low at 1817.75. So right at that uh, key 
line in the sand. And then we broke the IB to the low side. Uh, we did a make and break in our time study for the initial balance. Um, and other than that, uh, we had a little bit higher than normal volume. So, you know, uh, buyers are stepping in down in that area. In terms of the ATR, 20-day uh, uh, ATR average true range, the full session high and low gives us a uh, daily uh, RTA, I mean, sorry, ATR target on the high side of 1822.50 and to the low side 1813.75. Uh, uh, but uh, we're currently uh, trading uh, below that right now. So we're expanding our average true range in the full session uh, so far today. Let's take a look at the uh, trend macro to micro. You can uh, see that on the monthly the trend is still very much intact. Um, something to note here is that we are currently running an inside month so far. And we're trading, you know, in the middle of the distribution from uh, from last month. So if we continue to see weakness and uh, stay below the month high or the all, you know, the year high, which is at 45.75, we're actually going to get a inside Mr. Sneaky uh, on the uh, on the monthly bar. But overall, we've got good slope and separation on the uh, on the nine EMA and the twenty SMA, and uh, you know the trend is still you know very much intact in on the monthly and we have to get all the way down to uh 1724 area before we really uh you know challenge the overall monthly trend going to the uh weekly we have come back down and we're testing that 9 EMA again on the weekly we haven't closed below it yet uh you know see how we uh handle today's if we get below uh, 1810 and close below 1810 you know we've uh, you know come down and had our first close of the year below the 9 EMA and uh, certainly showing some weakness we lost some slope but we do have separation and they can easily bounce off of this and uh, and go higher uh, if we break below then I'm uh, I would be looking for us to come down and uh, test the uh, 20 uh, SMA from above, and I think that's going to be in around that 1781.50, and we'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. In the daily, you can see that we've closed yesterday uh, below the 9 and the 20. We've been having this consolidation uh, sideways. We said this was the first weakness uh, that uh, is coming up in the time frames and that uh, it could uh, lead to uh, a bigger downturn. And then so far today, we're currently trading uh, below the 9 and the 20 and, uh, you know, seeing some weakness coming into this marketplace. Going over to the geometric chart, um, we talked about uh, the fact that we were uh, breaking below, we had broke below and closed below the center line of the intermediate uh, fork that we were uh, following and that we were struggling to get back above it. And then, you know, we had gotten back in, uh, back below the downward sloping fork upper line, and then, you know, re re rejecting the center line, we were looking at, you know, coming down here and testing this, uh, this lower line of the upward sloping fork, which is, you know, if to do that today, to test the lower line, we're looking at uh, in around 1804, 1805 area. So far, we've come down to 1808. Of course, we do have this energy point that I think now becomes very significant. Uh, you know, it's scheduled to hit in around the uh, the 29th. So uh, sometime, uh, you know, in uh, the early next week. Uh, this is a target that you'd be looking for and this is a very significant energy point because it also happens to be right at the uh, micro composite VPOC of the balance that we broke out of below or in, more, in clearer terms you'll see it on the composite it's the most traded price or the most accepted price in the balance that we're coming down to test so let's take a look at uh, just the uh, intra uh, day trend just to see where we are intraday coming into uh, the morning. Okay, maybe I am uh, losing. Am I still on, Howard? Uh, 
Testing, one, two, three. Um, here is yesterday um, we had challenged the 9 and the 20 moving averages on the daily that stayed above yesterday we uh, broke solidly through and closed below both and now we've seen the 9 EMA cross below the 20 SMA the 9 EMA in red, the 20 SMA in the dashed uh, maroon we almost came down and challenged the 50 SMA here in Cyan <coughs> and but rejected from there and then during the Globex so far this morning we actually challenged it again and broke below it briefly and uh, had a initial rejection off of that so looks like the next level of support here is the 50 SMA at 1811 we have the key line in the sand with the CLBN at 1818 and we've uh, broken below that so these are you know, key support levels on the daily. I'll quickly go over market breadth. So here we're seeing in the middle graph the advanced declines on a 10-day average basis, NYSE and Cyan and the NASDAQ in red. And after yesterday's activity, NYSE is sitting right at the break-even level at 50%. NASDAQ has fallen below 50% where there are more net decliners than advances on a 10-day average basis. And then the lower graph shows up volume versus down volume. We can see that both NYSE and the NASDAQ have fallen below the break-even so that there's more net uh, down volume then up volume on a 10-day average basis and where the uh, NYSE is a little bit stronger in terms of advanced declines the NYSE is actually weaker than the NASDAQ in terms of up volume versus down volume. sectors now. <clears throat> so we're seeing you know, quite a dispersion in terms of sector performance. Uh, this is since the beginning of 2014. Uh, healthcare, the XLV, has been the sector leader since the beginning of the year. And what happened week last year, utilities has uh, come into second place, technology is in third place, and those are the only three sectors that are performing a bit better than their open. All other sectors are currently below their open for the year, um, with retail uh, trailing the pack significantly. And uh, if we remember from last year, retail had led all sectors most of last year. This year is opening the weakest. It's already down over 6%. On the so with that, uh, that's all I've got, Doug. I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Howard. And again, I apologize. Uh, I can't control the weather. Um, are you going to make me present or you want me to just take over? No, go ahead and take it. So where did I, where did I lose everybody?
Did I lose you again? Uh, no, I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you got past uh, the, you know, the monthly, weekly trends or not. Okay. Um, did we get to the geometric chart before? Because I didn't notice that I'd gone down until a little, a little bit in. Go ahead and start there. All right. So we've been watching these three forks. We've got the long-term fork that we've been watching for a very long time. We've been trading uh, in the uh, lower channel uh, between the center line, this line right here, and this line. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, I put this uh, intermediate one in, which kind of mirrors this, but on a smaller scale. And then I, you know, we came up to the high. Uh, I took the last swing low and I created a uh, opposing fork. And we've been, you know, trading around the center line of the intermediate uh, uh, upward sloping fork. And uh, we came back and closed below it on this uh, day right here. And then from there, you know, we've been trying to break back outside of the downward sloping fork and get above the upper, uh, the center line of the upward sloping fork. And yesterday we were talking about if we, you know, when we had this weak, weakness coming in, uh, you know, we were, tr you know, looking for if we got below the upper line of the downward sloping fork that we'd be possibly looking at coming down and testing the lower line of the upward sloping fork. Today, you know, <clears throat> to do that would be in around 1804. 1805 area, and uh, and we're currently, uh, tr you know, came down to about 1808. So we are seeing some weakness. I'm watching to see whether or not we break out of this uh, uh, upward sloping fork and come down and test the center line and come off of the upper line to test the center line of the downward sloping fork. What we do have is a significant, uh, you know, energy point right here, which is where the center line of the opposing downward sloping fork and the long-term uh, lower line of the uh, upward sloping fork. And that energy point is right at 1781.50. And if anybody has been following uh, in homework, they know how important that 1781.50. And that's showing that we should hit this sometime in the, uh, uh, the uh, beginning of next week. Uh, we just, you know, if we, I would watch for a break below the uh, the lower line of the upward intermediate fork uh, to give us clues, and then I think this really comes into play. So let's take a look at uh, what this looks like overall. I'm just going to, you know, zoom out here so you can see this better. Of course, from the period between November the 14th and uh, uh, December the 19th, we were trading in this balance area. And this uh, balance area is all centered around the microcomposite VPOC or the most traded price in this distribution zone uh, down here between 1764 and 1807. The most accepted price uh, was 1781.50. So anything below this 18 hundred level, uh, you, you know, the big number to keep your eye on and look for the rotation down to is the 1781.50. It also happens to be that significant energy point. <clears throat> but prior to breaking out of this balance down here, we came up and the last most accepted price before we broke out of balance was 1802.50, this small two-day microcomposite VPOC. And then, of course, we broke out. We had the breakout day here at 18 uh, with the VPOC at 1814 uh, area. And then we came up, got into this uh, upper distribution, created uh, price acceptance at 1822.75, you know, and then we, you know, basically chopped around creating, you know, uh, the overall microcomposite or most accepted price in this upper distribution from December the 23rd through to today at uh, 1832. And, of course, that shifted up and down during the course as they matured the auction. The key thing that we've been watching uh, was a break of this 18 again. And I said, you know, we'd come down to, you know, the... Uh, you know, test the lower area and found buyers and uh, around that 1813, there should be a little micro, a little micro composite between these two days. I don't know why it's not there, but we had the uh, shift 
uh, down here as they came down and accumulated in around 13 and then took it up the very next day. Um, and we've come down to that level. We didn't quite hit it yesterday. We still have that naked VPOC at uh, 18.13. We'll look at that on the daily. But the key thing you've got to, you know, uh, you, you've got to take into this is that we broke below this 18. And to me, you know, once we came down and broke that 18 for the second time, uh, you know, it was likely that we were going to have to go lower to pick up buyers. You know, we're not finding the buyers with enough con conviction to take us, you know, securely. Overnight, they came, you know, they rotated us all the way back, about halfway back, uh, you know, up to that 1828 area in around this uh, CHVN at 1827. But then once Europea, uh, Europe, Europe opened, uh, Europeans took us down and uh, broke back below that 18 and got all the way down to 1808, just, you know, just above the next key uh, significant area. So right now, we're finding a little bit of balance where we did before, you know, the buyer stepped in at 1809 to, uh, to uh, halt. So they found value down here, and we're currently trading uh, in around this distribution around the CHVN around 1813.50. If we can't get back above 18 and hold once we, uh, you know, get into the RTH session, you've got to look for more weakness coming in. And I think we're going to see, you know, a test of this 1807. Of course, significance of 1807, it's uh, uh, 1807 and a quarter. It's basically just above the range high from the prior balance that uh, we were in, with that range high being at 1806.75, so two ticks above that. Below that, I would look for a quick move down to 1802.50. And one of two things is going to happen here. We're going to find some strong conviction and responsive buyers stepping in here because that's the last most accepted price before they broke out of the range. Uh, and we bounce from there and uh, go back up towards that 1813.15 area and push through to test that 18.18 again. But if we don't find buyers here, then everything shifts to moving and testing, you know, the 1700s again. And the key, you know, prices that you want to pay attention to down here, obviously the 1798, you can see that, you know, we tried to hold value here before we went back down and uh, found buyers down at the micro composite, came back up, tried to hold it again, couldn't, came back down, and then, you know, finally got back up above. So the first area that you want to look for a rotation to below 1800 is down to the 9850 and then all depends on whether or not we hold below uh this uh, 180725 and if we you know if we continue to see weakness everything shifts and you've got to look for the bigger rotation down here to this 18 uh 178150 because there's not a lot uh of you know accepted value in between the 98 and the 81. This is that, you know, larger area of price rejection as they, you know, rotated back up. You know, the, you know, I think we'll get a quick move down to the 1781.50. In fact, if we close today uh, anywhere below uh, 1807 and a quarter, I think you can, you know, have a, uh, a high probability that we see this 1781.50 uh, uh, sometime you know, beginning of, uh, you know, middle, uh, sorry, beginning to the middle of next week in around, well, the, the energy point is showing us the 29th. So, uh, you know, I forget <coughs> what day the 29th is. Uh, the 29th is Wednesday. So we could see this uh, energy point and this uh, microcomposite VPOC tested uh, by then. If we get back above 18, uh, you know, look for rotation back towards the 22. That was, you know, was where we, you know, once we got up here, that's where they first accepted value. That's where they came down and tested uh, a couple times uh, before taking it up. And uh, I'd look for that rotation up to that with the other side of balance being the uh, value area low. The overall value up here, the 70% of all the volume up here was between 1824.75 and 18.40 and a quarter. So those two uh, CLVNs that we've been watching at 24 and a quarter and, uh, and 40.75, that's balance up here. 
So if we uh, get above 18, they'll probably come up to test that level and either reject off of it or accept it again and get that rotation up into uh, you know balance around 32. And then we can see if we can start testing these upper areas. So, but 18 no longer is the line in the sand below. It now becomes the line in the sand above and a significant level you've got to watch. Everything below 18, I'd be selling rallies. I'd be selling, you know, anything that, uh, any weakness that you see to the upside. Once you're above the 18, then I'd be looking to buy the dips and, uh, and look for a rotation higher. So let's take a look at uh, the uh, overnight. You can see that, you know, we closed yesterday at 18, uh, 23, 75, and then basically we rotated around there, drifted up towards uh, that uh, 28, um, and you know, just sort of, uh, you know, we're in a, you know, pretty harmonic rotation around that uh, 23, 22, 75 level, and then when Europe opened, there, that's when we saw the weakness, and they, you know, uh, you know. You can see the OTF stepped in and took us down, and then you know once we got down into this 1809, we got the shift. The VPOC, for the most part uh, of the uh, Globex, was up here in around this 1823, and then when the buyers uh, stepped in, you can see how active the OTF was. Uh, they found value down here, and you know the buyers stepped in and held us up. We're currently seeing, you know, uh, some weakness coming in. We didn't quite get uh, up to the 18, uh, you know, and I'd be looking at, a, you know, a good probability to come down and uh, test this 1809 and a quarter, and, of course, the low of the Globex down here at 1808. So let's move our numbers over to our intraday chart. So our overnight high is up at 28. Our overnight low so far, and this could change, but so far it's down here at 1808. <clears throat> and then we have our current uh, uh, Globex VPOC at 1809 and a quarter. And now we can get rid of this. <clears throat> Expand this out so we can see this better. <coughs> So we are opening up right now. If we stay down here, uh, we got another 15 minutes. If we stay below the 1375, you know, we're going to open auction out of range. So we're going to be below value and outside of range. We do have this uh, naked VPOC at 1813 and a quarter, um, and we've got the overnight low at 18, 1808. So my main hypothesis for this morning would be for us to, you know, if we open in this area, you know, between 18.10 and 18.13, you know, my main hypothesis would to see us open, come up and te take out the naked VPOC, test the range uh, from uh, below, and then, you know, see if we find responsive buyers stepping in, or sellers stepping in to keep us outside of range. Uh, and, you know, you've got uh, the CHVN at uh, uh, 1350. You've got a minor CLVN right here at uh, 15 and a quarter. And uh, so what I would uh, be looking for, uh, I'll be, I'm not going to be trading myself because I'm heading uh, out of town today, but I'd be looking to uh, look for responsive sellers stepping in at 18, uh, you know, 13 to 18, 15 area. If uh, they do step in, then I'm looking for a rotation down to take out the overnight low. Uh, you know, and that's not supposed to be the open swing low. That's supposed to be the open overnight low. Sorry, 1808. So I'd be looking for a rotation down to take out the 1808 and test this uh, 1807 and a quarter. So 1807 and a quarter is where I would look for possible uh, responsive buyers stepping in 
uh, as we take out that overnight low. Remember that we have a 96% probability of taking out the overnight low or the overnight high, but when you're out of range and out of value, uh, your higher probability, that 96% really gets shifted towards this overnight low, especially because of the fact that we're below that 1818. Uh, and then if we break below that 1707, I'd be looking for that rotation in our immediate target below, uh, which is going to be this 1802.50 area. I'll move it to the front. And the gap close. We still have a gap down here at 1802. And, uh, and the other area I'd be looking to do business below that and looking for responsive buyers to defend the centennial number at uh, 1800. And then look for if they do come in here uh, at uh, between 1802.50 and 1800, I'd be looking for rotation back up to break us above this 1807 and a quarter and drift up. Uh, during the day up towards this 1813 level and trying to come back up into range. If we get inside of the range and we can hold inside of the range, I'd look for continuation to test the value area low and this 1818 level. So that's going to be uh, my immediate target above, but also my trade area because I'll be looking for, uh, you know, uh, you know, responsive sellers to step in here and keep us out of value. Once we're above that 18, then I'm looking for those rotations I talked about. Up to take out the, uh, the uh, naked VPOC at 18.22.25, come up and take out the, uh, the gap that we have at uh, the close from yesterday at 18.23.75 and come up and test the value area high and that CLVN at 24 and a quarter and the value area low from the overall balance that we just broke out of. So you've got the, you know, the micro composite value area low, you've got the CLVN, you've got the, uh, the close from yesterday, and you've got the value area high from yesterday. So this is going to be an extremely important area uh, to come up here and test if we get inside of value. Also gives you your 80% value area uh, rule of uh, if we hold inside of value, rotating out and testing the other side of value. So, uh, you know, so this 18 becomes so important to, you know, the, uh, to, you know, whether or not we get back into value and, uh, you know, back into balance. Uh, so, you know, if we get inside of the range, look for them to push to test this level, and then one of two things is going to happen. There's going to accept it, and we you know, continue to go higher, and we get back into balance, and, uh, you know, uh, get a continued move up. But if we reject it again, uh, you know, then you know we're still need, we're still seeing weakness and uh, you know a higher likelihood that we come down and test uh, into the 1700s again. Um, so that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, you know the immediate targets uh, above 24. You know then I'd be looking to take out the overnight high and come up to test uh, you know this uh, minor CLVN at 28. 25 and of course if we get above that I'd be looking for uh, tests of coming uh, coming up and uh, you know testing the range high from yesterday and of course the uh, extended target above which is going to be up here at uh, 1832.25 which is the overall most accepted price from December the 23rd all the way to uh, yesterday. Uh, so that would be my extended target, and of course I would take a, uh, a breakout trade of the range at 1830. Uh, and of course, if we really, uh, you know, get some strength and we get a big rally going uh, on uh, Friday, the extended target above is the naked close and the naked VPOC uh, up there at 39. And that 39 uh, area is also that uh, micro composite that we, you know, we're trying to hold value higher to make. You know, a run for a new high. So we we're trying to hold value up here at 1839, which of course we fell out of uh, yesterday. So those would be extended targets uh, above. And then if we really see some weakness, okay, my extended targets below are going to be that 98.
98 and a quarter. And, you know, the, the other side of that balance is really this 94.25. And my extended target of below is obviously that uh, 17.81.50. Uh, 81.50 or 81 and a quarter, 81.50. I'm just not expecting to see that uh, today. I think the uh, the low side is going to be a test of the 1800s. Oh, come on. Okay, so that's uh, that. Let's take a quick look at uh, how that lines up with the Keltner. You can see the lower Keltner line, we're currently uh, trading below the center line, is a test of that 1808 and a takeout of the overnight low. Uh, center line is 1813 around that CHVN, around balance, and that naked VPOC, and of course the test of the, uh, you know, the range low from yesterday. And then a move up to the upper Keltner, there's that 18, uh, 1818. So you can see how well that the Keltner uh, plays against the levels that we're looking at in the uh, uh, volume profile. Now, here's something I want you to pay attention to in gold. And this is something I've been talking about for a couple weeks now. Um, where'd my... Uh-oh. I lost my drawing. Oh, that's because I'm in charts. Okay, let me go to Active Trader. Here we go. So I've been talking about uh, this pattern that we're seeing in gold. Uh, this is a uh, what they call a descending broadening wedge. Uh, we've tested the upper trend line, you know, twice. And I, you know, I'd be talking about if we could hold the 17 uh, or 1170 uh, 9.40 area, that look for another test of the uh, upper trend line. A breakout of this trend line, you can see we've had our first test of it uh, above, a break above and a close above this, uh, this upper trend line. To me, this is a very strong reversal pattern that uh, you know, could lead to a much bigger move uh, upwards in gold. So pay attention to you know, this level uh, in around this uh, you know, uh, 1260 uh, six area. You know, we got up last night to uh, uh, that 12.73. Remember, we were talking about that. We'll take a look at that on our composite chart uh, for gold. Those were, our, you know, our upper targets uh, in gold were that uh, 72 and 74 area, and we came right up to uh, between the two of them. You know, the key line in the sand right now on the composite is this. Uh, 1260, is it 1260, it's right on top of it, I think it's 1265.20, but we're sitting, you know, right there uh, right now. If we can't hold above that, look for rotation back down to the 20, uh, the 1258, 1257 area with a push through to, you know, that key line we we're uh, talking about at 1254 1255 area, which was, you know, if we broke above that, we were looking for our two tar our targets at 58, 60, uh, 65, 64 area, but the big targets b above was at 1272 and 1274. You can go watch the videos from the last few days. It's, we've been talking about the same thing. So <clears throat> we're currently trying to break out of this balance that we're in. Of course, the most accepted price of the uh, of the balance that we are in is way down here, down in around that uh, you know 1240 uh, 1 1240 area. Um, so if we get back below this uh, 5480, the targets you want to pay attention to is 51, 47, 44, and then 42. With the other side of balance and that key line in the sand that we were talking about down here at. Uh, 1237 area. Uh, if we get above <coughs> the uh, 60, uh, you know, 6480, uh, if we stay above that, look for your rotation again back up into that 1272, 1274 area with uh, targets above at 7640 and the big one above at uh, 1282, 
uh, 30. And then again, the test of the, uh, the other side of that balance at 1300 with that major extended target still up here at uh, 1315. And that's when I'm starting, then that's where I'm going to be looking for a much stronger. I'll be probably trying to build a swing position in gold for uh, a bigger move because, you know, a, you know, target on this, you know, descending broadening wedge could bring us up all the way into test the, uh, you know, the 1700 levels. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, that's going to complete our, uh, you know, our session for the evening, um, for the evening, for the morning. I'm going to go ahead and close this down. I'm not going to be trading today, so Howard can go ahead and, uh, and open up the go-to room for the live members. And uh, as always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.